Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we got another video for you. We're actually gonna be working on the 330. I've been having some issues. I haven't been able to pass the smog test on this car, but um, I've been doing some research and I think I finally got it figured out. I'm gonna show you guys what I got figured out. So let's get to it. Let's go to the car. All right, guys, so this is the 330. This is a 3.0 M54 engine. It's got a problem with the secondary air pump. I haven't been able to pass the smog due to that. So I'm gonna show you guys what I figured out. Okay, guys, so the weird thing about this car is that I had a service engine light on for a while, which is basically your check engine light. It was on for a long time. I couldn't figure it out. I would put the ODB2 scanner on it and it just kept saying I had no codes. I got a little deeper into it. I went online, did some research. They uh, recommended to try to use IMPA. IMPA is a software that you can use on BMWs. It gets a little deeper into the computer where an ODB2 scanner won't. So once I got that hooked up, I ended up checking it and I did find some uh, hidden codes inside the ECU. We got those cleared. And uh, now I was able to pass a lot of my monitors for the for the uh, check engine, all except for the secondary air pump. So this is your secondary air pump here. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with it. If you have a E46. For those of you that didn't know this, Impa's a BMW software. It uh, It's what the factory used to use, I guess, back in the day. You can um, use it to diagnose a lot of problems that the normal ODB scanners won't pick up. So it's pretty much free online. You can find it. I'll try to put a link to the description on it. And um, do gotta buy a cable so you can connect to a laptop and make it work. But I ended up doing that. I had a little bit of trouble trying to get it installed on the laptop. But once I got it figured out, it all made sense. I'll show you guys how that works shortly. The way the system works is there's a valve back here in the back of the intake manifold. It has a small airline that comes all the way up here. This is the airline right here. It connects to this valve. So in the mornings when the car gets started, this compressor starts to feed air. It goes through here. When that small check valve opens under vacuum, opens this, allows the fresh air to go into the catalyst converters and uh, warm them up. So I already tested my system here. I know the check valve's opening because I put the line here. There was vacuum on the line. This valve's working because I took it off my last car and the compressor is definitely turning so everything here seems to be working so i know the problem's not in the mechanical parts it's got to be an electronic issue most of the time people's problem with the second air pump system will be the check valve not working the vacuum hose is ripped or that valve's not working or the compressor's not working so typically that's what it'll show you'll actually get a check engine code for that i don't have any check engine code so i know the whole system's operational so after doing some research, I know all my parts are working. I know everything's opening and everything's turning on. So the only other thing that works with the system is the O2 sensors. The two sensors before the catalyst converters are the ones that pick up the, the fresh air coming from the pump. So what I read online was that the sensors get old over time. They start to act lazy, so they don't respond as fast as they should. So after doing all this research, checking my system here, no check engine lights, they are still functioning, but they don't respond as fast as they should. And this is what uh, creates the problem. The ECU notices that it's not uh, reacting as fast as it should. This has to be the issue. So I picked up two new O2 sensors. So these are for the pre-cat. So these are before the catalyst converter. We're gonna be switching them out. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But let me show you the uh, ODB2 scanner and show you what the monitors are showing. All right, guys, just wanted to show you with the ODB scanner, it's showing no codes. Yes, I've driven the car. I've already uh, taken it kind of far, so I know it's definitely um, something with the secondary pump system in the O2 sensors maybe because it's not showing anything on the scanner. So as you can see, it says monitors. I am monitor status and not ready. Let me show you that. So in the monitors here, completed since the computer was cleared. I'll show you here. Pretty much all completed, 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 not supported, completed, and not completed secondary air pump system. So this is the one that's driving me nuts. We're going to get it figured out today. Okay, guys, so I want to show you IMPA. For those of you who never used it, you basically need to buy the cable online. So they sell this cable. I'll put a link in the description below. The software you can get online for free. This is basically old BMW software that you can download and uh, you can check out your car with. So on this one here, you have to get a computer that's Windows 10 or Windows XP. So this one here is Windows XP. Let me show you the system here. 
So this is Zimpa here, guys. Basically, you can choose what car you have. So in this case, we do F2 for the uh, for the E46 chassis. So we go F2 down here. And then you can pretty much pick the engine you have. So in this case, we have MS43, M54. So this MS43 computer on an M54 engine. Once you get that in there, just press OK. And this is going to show you all the different options here. You can do error memory, read status, different uh, functions. So I already checked the memory. There's no codes in there. I cleared them. I've driven the car and nothing came back. So I'll show you guys on another video how to use this uh, more in detail. But this will get you uh, a lot more deeper into the ECU than an ODB2 scanner will. So definitely recommend you guys pick this up. But let me get back to putting the sensors on. Once we get everything put back together, we'll start the car up and we'll see a live data reading here with the IMPA. Okay guys, so if you guys know getting O2 sensors out are very difficult, but I figured out with this tool here, it's a special tool for O2 sensors, got it at the snap-on truck. There's a part number. This makes it so much easier with that and this ratchet here that can multi-angle. This is going to make it so much easier for you guys to get it out. Let me get mine out and I'll show you okay, guys. guys. So first thing you want to do is get your oil cap off take the valve cover plastics off so once you got all that out of the way you can go ahead and disconnect your sensors this may be the trickiest part but mine's i've taken them off before so they come off pretty easy so once you got those off let me see this one here off now we can go ahead and get our our tool special socket tool we'll slip it inside the sensor down here Got that in there. Go ahead and drop our ratchet into it. Now we should just be able to turn it and break it free. That's it. That's simple, guys. Nothing, nothing too difficult. Anybody can do this. Real simple. Then we should be able to just break it free a little more. Once you get it hand loose, you'll be able to pull it off by hand.
Okay guys, so this is the new sensor. It's got uh, anti-seize already on it, so you want to make for sure to put some anti-seize on your thread so they don't uh, rust in there strip. So you came with it, we're gonna go ahead and drop it in there. And then just twist it on. And once we get it started, we'll go ahead and finish it off with the tool and get it tightened up all the way. it right there pretty much all it takes to change an O2 sensor a lot of people say it's very difficult I think having the right tools just makes the job so much easier and here's the proof So that's how you change out the sensors, get them plugged back in line, and we'll get this car started up right here shortly. Okay guys, so let me just get it started. We'll uh, let it warm up a little bit and then uh, we'll check the scanner again and see if it cleared the code. It may not clear right now, it's too hot. So the car usually has to be cold to clear. So I hope it does. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to try it when it's a little bit colder. So let's go ahead and start it up and see what happens. All right guys, so there it is. I finally got it cleared. It says monitor status ready. Again, this was uh, very difficult because it was a problem where the O2 sensor was working, but at the same time, I guess it wasn't uh, reacting as fast as it should. So if you guys got the problem where the sap doesn't want to get ready for the monitor and you've done everything and that you confirmed that everything's working, this is your problem. So this confirms it, O2 sensors before the cat will fix your sap. So there it is, guys. All the readiness monitors are completed, completed, completed. The ones that are not supported, your car doesn't have, so it doesn't really matter. So you just gotta check, make sure the other ones are all completed. These are completed, completed, not supported, not supported, completed, and not supported. So we're gonna call this a wrap. I can finally take this to the smog, get this car smogged. All right, guys, so this is a live data stream of uh, bank one, bank two, sensor one. So as you can see, the sensors are very active. They're moving up and down. This is what you want to see. I didn't notice the difference now that I replaced them. It's a big difference. If I uh, find the clip, I'll tag it uh, right here. But as you guys can see, this is uh, working good. So I'm gonna call this a wrap. Okay guys, so like I said, I was going to show you guys how IMPA works for those of you who have never used it. So this is your Lambda probe, so basically your O2 sensors here, bank 1, bank 2. So you can see a lot of information on that, if you can uh, make it out. This is very helpful. So a lot of different things you can do with the car. Kind of got to go through them and figure out what everything does. but. It's really good software for cheap basically it's free you just buy the cable and uh, you can check your car out so definitely highly recommend it for anybody so you can also see vinyls here so you can actually see what the intake and the exhaust uh, vinyls uh, cylinders are doing another thing you can actually see here is what it says as rough 
so that's supposed to tell you how good your car is running so it shows every individual cylinder here not sure the details on this but pretty sure you're not supposed to be in red I mean it's pretty common sense but not sure so I'm gonna do some research and try to figure this out but as you can see here it shows you all the different cylinders and it's uh, showing some different values so has something to do with the engine and the way it's uh, running if your cylinder is still in good condition or not so here it is I'm giving it a little bit of uh, RPM so I'll do some more research on that and update you guys on that on another video also guys this does um, more than just the engine it actually has like for body and transmission so for example here we went on engine earlier this one we go this is the transmission we got so I guess we got a GS 20 here and um, just press ok and here it's reading the transmission itself so gives you a lot of uh, information on it any codes that are stored in it as well so it's just like the engine it'll let you read all these different uh, parameters just wanted to show you guys you can do that it can also beat read uh, body codes so if you go to chassis you can see different things ABS steering angle tire pressure different stuff and then you got all your the body modules so anytime you replace a part on the car that's electronic you probably got to get it programmed this would do all that so this thing can do a lot of different things here all right guys so that's gonna be it we're gonna call this a wrap uh, if you guys are having this issue on your car where you can't get the monitor for the secondary air pump to clear and you can't pass your smog this is gonna be your fix change your O2 sensors I did it. I tried everything before it. It didn't work. And this was the fix. So definitely recommend it if you're having this issue. And if you guys like this video, give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment in the bottom below. I'm going to tag uh, where I got the cable for the IMPA and the website where I picked up the software. If you guys want to pick that up. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks. Bye.